Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here. Just wanted to say a real quick thank you for all your prayers. I feel a lot better after having been down with the flu. Yuck, no fun. Uh, but with that, I wanted to tell you that the tickets are almost sold out for the Hear the Watchman conference. Now I would love to meet you guys in person, so please come visit me in Dallas, Texas this March 29th through the 31st. Right now, using the code LISA20, you can get $20 off your ticket price and they're not going to last very long but go to hearthewatchman.com and click on the dallas tab you can see all the amazing speaking speakers there uh, but come check it out and meet me in person all the information is in the description box below all right back to the broadcast what i'm about to say in today's report could make me a criminal in the very near future what am I talking about? Well, let me put it to you this way. Imagine you woke up one morning and did your normal routine and went and got a cup of coffee to start your day. Then you decide that you have a little extra time on your hands, so you go in front of the internet and start searching things you've always thought about. Some of those things just so happen to include September 11th. You've always heard the term conspiracy theorists and how they claim that it was a government cover-up. So you search on the internet, about all the dealings that surround September 11th. To your shocker, you're stunned by what you found. And in your opinion, you now believe that September 11 could very likely be a cover-up. So that takes you a little further to look up JFK. After all, maybe the narrative that they told you about John F. Kennedy and why and who assassinated him isn't the real story. So you start looking into that, as well as chemtrails and other things that you've heard about. Soon, you discover that many of these theories you thought were fake are in fact true. As a result, word starts to spread that you are conspiracy theorists and that you believe things that you're not allowed to believe. In fact, experts have now labeled you with two potentials. One, that you might have a mental illness and two, well, that you are more likely to commit a crime. Don't believe me? Check this report out. This is on the NewYorkPost.com, published February 26, 2019. Believing conspiracy theories might make you a criminal, and that's according to a study. The article goes on to state that a new study measured participants' belief in general notions of conspiracy, as well as how much they agreed with specific theories. Those inclined to believe the theories were more accepting of everyday crimes, such as demanding a refund for no apparent reason. In addition, exposure to conspiracy theories was found to make people more apt to engage in low-level criminal activity. Researchers found that this tendency was directly linked to an individual's feeling of lack of social cohesion or shared values. According to this report, if you believe in conspiracy theories, then you are more likely to accept everyday crime. Better yet, if you so much as engage, listen to, or bend your ear to a conspiracy theorist or listen to a conspiracy on the internet, then according to this report, then you are more apt to engage in low-level criminal activity. Let me take it a step further. Check out this article. This one's on medicalexpress.com. Now, this is an older one from 2014, but the psychology of conspiracy theories. And it states, what makes a person more likely to believe in or create conspiracy theories and whether that is related to mental illness is the subject of new research from Victoria University of Wellington. In other words, for doing something as simple as research. And that's what people who study uh, September 11th and uh, who study you know, government cover-ups and who study things like Operation Popeye and Northwoods and MK Ultra. these aren't conspiracy theories. A lot of these have been proven as facts, but people who want to get the answers and find out the truth of what's going on suddenly have been labeled as someone with a possible illness or someone who is more likely to commit a crime than someone else. I mean, really? 
This is the kind of stuff that, that, that is going on. And now YouTube is also putting up and attacking and delisting anyone who's speaking about a certain conspiracy theory. Now, the problem with that is it's very close to what happened in the Soviet Union. And I'll show you that in a moment. But let me tell you first a few conspiracies that have been proven facts. I'll just name a few. MK Ultra mind control. Yes, it's a proven fact. The government partook in mind control experiments likely still are today, but yet that's called a conspiracy theory. NASA spying on us. All that came out with Edward Snowden before it was called a conspiracy theory. Again, uh, press, the U.S. press, as in mainstream media working with the U.S. government, that's called Project Mockingbird. It happened then. It's still happening now with CIA agents actually working as reporters within the mainstream media. Fake wars, Operation Northwoods, tobacco causing cancer. They said it didn't. Illuminati, secret societies, they said didn't exist. Bohemian Grove, they said a bunch of leaders don't go there and they do. Gadar, yes, that's a thing that they made and created in Canada. U.S. government employed Nazi scientists. This is Operation Paperclip. Uh, they also can make heart attack guns. This is part of a CI weapon. All facts. A government can manipulate the weather. That's Operation Popeye, cloud seeding, things that I've proven on my channel. But all that aside, these are all facts that they've, that they've said were fake. And look, bottom line, they could say anything is a conspiracy theory, anything. You know, in that first report that I showed you uh, by the New York Post, let me show you a few of the things that they labeled as conspiracy theories on that article. This is the article, and I'll restate it real quick from newyorkpost.com. And it's titled, Believing Conspiracy Theories Might Make You a Criminal Study. Here's a list of the things that they called conspiracy theories. Birthers, 9-11, nobody walked on the moon. Pyramids were built by aliens. If you don't believe the Mueller report, yes, that's on there. Disney's Frozen, MI6 assassination of, President, of uh, Princess Diane. They just called not believing Mueller's report, you know, the fake Russia narrative, the fake dossier as a conspiracy theory. What else are they going to call a conspiracy theory? Jesus? Are they going to call belief in Jesus Christ a conspiracy theorist? And then say all Christians are more likely to be criminals or have some kind of mental issue? I mean, really? I don't care what religion or faith you believe in, I'm a Christian, and I believe full-heartedly in Jesus Christ. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, they can literally deem anything a conspiracy because it's open to interpretation, you see, because many conspiracies turn out to be true. But here's the bottom line. This sounds eerily similar to something they did under Stalin's regime. Check this out. This is on Wikipedia, actually. Political abuse of psychiatry in the Soviet Union. It goes on. There was a systematic political abuse of psychiatry in the Soviet Union based on the interpretation of political opposition or dissidents as a psychiatric problem. It was called psychopathological mechanisms of dissent. During the leadership of General Secretary Lenoid Brahens, psychiatry was used to disable and remove from society political opponents or dissidents, those who openly expressed beliefs that contradicted the official dogma. The term philosophical intoxication, for instance, was widely applied to the mental disorder or diagnosis when people disagreed with the company's communist leaders. Yes, that happened. So simply for being political opposite of Stalin, you were labeled as, well, uh, philosophical intoxication, that you were intoxicated in your mind. So you had a mental disorder. This is why I bring attention to what's happening in the U.S. Because when we study history and we see what happened in the Soviet Union, I can only raise my alarm bells for what's happening here. Anyhow, please don't forget to check out my partner who helps support what I do. If you guys not checked out the Morgan, uh, this coin is amazing, very historic coin. Uh, but if you go to 
historicsilvercoins.com. Uh, you can check out this amazing coin, but it's got a great special right now. And right now you get $5 off using the code Lisa. So Lisa will give you $5 off any of those coins, but they sell some in mint condition, some in so-so condition. Uh, but I've got one here and this thing is pretty awesome, but it's definitely a keeper. I love coins and keep them, even send them as presents and gifts and also a good bartering tool, but it comes with the history of the coin. Uh, but anyhow, you can check it out at historicsilvercoins.com. Use the code Lisa to get $5 off. Anyhow, I'd love to get your thoughts, comments, and concerns. I'm Lisa Haven, signing out.